In this video, we derive the formula for calculating the belt length and the bearing force for belt drives. When designing belt drives, it is necessary to determine the required belt length for a given pulley diameter and pulley distance. The basis for calculating the belt length is the mounted state of the belt on the pulleys. The belt consists of the two circular arc sections B1 and B2 of the input and output pulleys and the two straight belt sections LS. The sum of these belt sections gives the geometric belt length L, where this length refers to the inside of the belt. The individual terms of this formula are determined in the following. This is done using the inclination angle alpha, which is the angle between the center line of the pulleys and the straight section of the belt. This angle alpha occurs again at the points shown. Note that in the following, all angles are specified in radians. Now we move the straight belt section LS to the center of the small pulley. We obtain a right angled triangle with the center distance A as the hypotenuse and the length LS as the adjacent line. Using the cosine of the angle alpha, the straight belt length LS can now be determined as a function of the center distance A as shown. To determine the length of the curved belt section B2 around the output pulley, we first calculate the length of the semicircle marked in red as shown. However, the two arc segments marked in black must now be added. These are calculated using the inclination angle alpha as shown. Note that the required arc length in radians is the product of the arc radius and the arc angle alpha. The arc length B1 of the belt around the drive pulley is determined in the same way. However, the two black colored arc lengths must now be subtracted from the length of the semicircle marked in green due to the inclination of the belt. We now have all the individual terms that we need to determine the belt length L. By using the corresponding expressions, we finally obtain the stated formula. We can simplify this formula somewhat by using the specified small angle approximations, since in most cases in practice, the inclination angle alpha is small. The sine of the angle alpha, or the angle alpha due to the small angle approximation, can be determined from the pulley diameters using the yellow triangle as indicated. This results in the shown approximation formula for the cosine of the angle alpha. In the formula for calculating the belt length, both the angle alpha and the cosine of the angle alpha are therefore replaced by the respective approximation formulas. By simplifying the terms, we finally obtain the given formula for determining the belt length, which depends only on the center distance and the diameters of the pulleys. It should be noted that it is not decisive for the use of the formula which of the diameters D1 or D2 is the input or output pulley. The approximation formula for the belt length not only has the advantage of being very simple and does not require the inclination angle alpha, but also allows the center distance E to be determined for a given belt length. After mathematical transformations and solving the quadratic equation, we obtain the formula shown. Four flat belts, the center distance should be set between 0.7 and 2 times the sum of the diameters in accordance with the standard. In the following, the calculation of the bearing force of a belt drive is explained in more detail. The forces acting in the belt press the belt against the pulley and thus also act on the shaft bearings. The tight side force FT and the slack side force FS are thus balanced by the bearing force FB of the shaft. The angle between the forces FT and FS corresponds to the wrap angle phi1 on the drive pulley. The bearing force FB can now be calculated from the tight side force FT, the slack side force FS and the wrap angle phi1 using the law of cosines. The wrap angle phi1 can be determined from the inclination angle alpha. To do this, twice the inclination angle alpha is subtracted from the semicircle with the angle pi in radians. The previously derived relationship with the pulley diameters and the center distance applies to the inclination angle alpha. If this expression for the inclination angle alpha is inserted into the equation derived, the formula given for determining the wrap angle phi1 on the drive pulley is obtained. It should be noted that the calculated bearing force of the drive shaft also applies to the same extent to the bearing force of the output shaft for reasons of balance of forces. In the linked video on the basics of power transmission in belt drives, it has already been explained in detail that the tight side force FT results from the sum of the preload force FP and half of the circumferential force FC to be transmitted, while the slack side force FS is determined from the difference between the preload force FP and half of the circumferential force FC.
The circumferential force is calculated as indicated from the input torque M1 and the radius R1 of the drive pulley, or from the drive power P1 and the rotational speed N1. If the terms for the tight side force and the slack side force are inserted into the derived formula, the following expression is obtained. By simplifying this equation, we obtain the formula shown for calculating the bearing force FB from the preload force FP and the circumferential force FC to be transmitted. At a wrap angle phi of 180 degrees or pi, the shaft load is at its maximum because the belt forces are then parallel and acting fully on the bearing. In this case, the bearing load in subsequent operation is twice the preload force FP. Since the inclination angle alpha is often very small in practice, the wrap angle can actually be assumed to be 180 degrees as a first approximation, so that the bearing force can then be assumed to be twice the value of the preload force for initial estimates. So note, the bearing force corresponds to a maximum of twice the value of the preload force. When calculating the bearing forces in the operating condition, centrifugal forces must not be taken into account. Although the belt must be additionally preloaded at rest by the amount of centrifugal forces expected later in operation, this additional centrifugal belt force does not act on the bearings during subsequent operation because the belt tries to lift itself off the pulley with exactly this amount of force and thus relieves the bearings by the same amount. Only the preload force FP is relevant to the bearing load during operation, which is why it is also called dynamic preload. So note, the centrifugal forces present during operation are compensated by the additional preload and therefore do not affect the bearing force. In the video on the basics of power transmission, it was shown that for a given circumferential force FC to be transmitted, the minimum required preload force FP min can be determined using the formula given. Conversely, for a given preload force FP, the maximum transmittable circumferential force FC max can be determined using this formula. If we now assume the maximum possible bearing force in the worst case, the shown relationship can be established between the existing bearing force FB and the associated maximum circumferential force FC max to be transmitted. Solving this equation for the maximum transmissible circumferential force gives the formula shown for calculating this maximum transmissible circumferential force for a given maximum allowable bearing force. The term marked in red in this equation is also referred to as the pull factor phi. For example, a pull factor of 0.8 means that a maximum of 80% of the bearing force acting during operation is available for power transmission. So note, the higher the pull factor, the higher the maximum circumferential force compared to the bearing load, which means efficient power transmission.